In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the upcoming storminess. We do have multiple days of severe weather on the way as multiple larger storm systems cross the nation. We also have some big temperature flips on the way that we've been discussing for a while. We're going to dive back into those today. Now, let's take a look at things. We're starting out for tomorrow afternoon time frame on Thursday, April 25th here, and we see our first larger storm, 999 over eastern Colorado, causing quite a bit of storminess out to the east of there. We're seeing areas like South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Louisiana, Mississippi, and down through Alabama, all seeing some thunderstorms out to the east of this system. A little bit more wintry out to the west of it is we do have some snowfall in the lower or better yet the higher elevation areas with those rainfall areas being in the lower elevations. For the northwest it's the same thing we have some heavier rainfall in those lower elevation regions with snowfall for the more mountaintop locations. By Friday we see everything kind of expand and look a little bit more intense. 987 over Nebraska warm front way up to the north cold front stretching down here. Uh, down through the plains and some of the deeper south areas like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Illinois, maybe even seeing some of this thunderstorm activity. Down through Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and back through Georgia, there is another pocket of thunderstorms as well. But I think your main corridor to watch is going to be here on the more western area of thunderstorms. We do see some cooler air. It's nothing too substantial on the western end of things with some snowfall here in the higher elevations out west certainly playing a role. Again, rainfall in the lower elevations, of course, and we do have some lower pressure out here, but not super low compared to your eastern counterparts there. Let's keep going. I want to take this towards Saturday. And what we see is that this low weakens over time as it's reaching kind of the Wisconsin and upper peninsula of Michigan areas as a 996, so again, a bit weaker now by this point. Warm front out to the east here, cold front still stretching down. I think overall it's going to be a less intense system by this point uh, for out here. I think the more major one is now going to be your 997, located near the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma, respectively. Some snowfall out here for the mountaintop locations also of your Rocky Mountains. As we reach Sunday here, on April 28th, we see this storm has weakened over Nebraska, but there is still this rather substantial cold front down through some of the plains and deeper south areas, and then a warm front up to the north, so very, very similar to the storm before it. Um, these storms kind of want to go over the same exact areas and lead towards similar impacts over and over and over again here. That's going to be the theme here through this entire model run, as you can probably already tell. Let's take it towards Monday on April 29th, and what we see is this is now... Uh, down into the 1,000 millibars, we have this cold front still stretching back through Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. Warm front up there in Canada, so overall warmer temperatures here for the eastern states should be expected. With some cooler temps over the central states, but nothing too substantial. Most of the coldest temperatures are actually over your northwest areas there, uh, actually matter of fact, where there is some snowfall occurring. Let's take this towards Tuesday on April 30th. And what we see is a 999 over the Hudson Bay. Uh, we do see some somewhat of a frontal boundary still stretching through the eastern states, bringing some thunderstorm activity for a lot of these areas. Probably a little bit less substantial by this point, but not not confirmed to be that. But that just seems to be what I would uh, what I would think here. Uh, by Thursday, there is a little bit more activity once again, uh, regaining some steam here across the the plains here, some of the Ohio Valley and Midwest as well. Um, but again. No major lows to be seen here for Thursday, uh, May 2nd. As we move forward, uh, same story really through the end of this model run all the way through Saturday, May 4th. We have some scattered about and isolated thunderstorms here in the north central regions of the United States, but no major lows to work with here. Out west, there is some snowfall occurring for portions of the Sierra Nevada mountains and the Cascades here. Uh, so certainly that is playing a role as well. Total precipitation really shows the full story here. There is quite a bit of activity for the Northwest. And the main, main area of activity is going to be across this central United States region throughout a lot of the plains, Midwest, and portions of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes as well. This is where we have the most above average activity, both in terms of rainfall and severe weather. The eastern seaboard looking a lot quieter than these more central counterparts. So keep that in mind. There's almost no activity making its way in here for the next 10 days, which is extremely quiet for this time of year for these areas. 
Let's take a look at the temperature pattern and we do have some colder air masses on the way, including basically the one right on our doorstep. By tomorrow, we see this really set in for a lot of the Ohio Valley back through the mid-Atlantic and Northeast. It's not the most substantial cooldown in the world, but it is a cooldown nevertheless. We do have much, much warmer temperature set up over the central states, and these could be moving eastward, especially when we consider this colder air set up along that western seaboard. As time moves on, we do see that warmer air trend in for the west here. So we do see the Ohio Valley, especially the Great Lakes, uh, even up through portions of the eastern states warming up overall with colder air back for most of the central states and a warming trend a little bit here for the west coast, which could indicate this cold will once again be moving eastward. So let's see if that happens. It actually doesn't this time. So thankfully, I I'm happy about that. Um, the cold really, really regains its hold out here for the west. We see more substantial cold out there in the west, and this really re-encourages that warmth to solidify itself for the central and eastern states, which is going to be very, very nice for all of you warm weather lovers. I think most people are this time of year, at least, hoping for some warmth after the winter that we've had. Whether it was cold or warm, and actually the, the more warmer winters are a little bit more frustrating because it's cold, but relatively snowless. So it's kind of a pointless cold. And that's what we dealt with for a long time, at least here in Virginia. So I am very excited for the warmth. We do get some signs of cold here around the kind of fourth, fifth, sixth time frame of May on this particular model. And that does want to hold on all the way through the ninth on uh, the East Coast here. As you can see, we have a colder pocket set up, especially in the Southeast, but all the way up the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast with an overall warmer regime here for the West. This will be something to watch. I'm curious about this. And again, this is our European AI model, the one that we've been using for over a week now. So I am curious to continue using this model, see how it does. Overall, I think it's been better than what the GFS does. And it's going to only continue to improve, which is pretty exciting to think about. So I am excited to check that out. Uh, we are going to check out the Storm Prediction Center outlook here. I didn't have it pulled up, so we're going to have to do it on screen, which is, you know, it's whatever, guys. Let's take a look. Here's the day one categorical outlook, and we do have a general thunderstorm risk here in the lighter greens with a marginal level one risk here in the darker greens where some isolated severe weather may persist through tomorrow morning on Thursday, uh, April 25th. This outlook kind of ends at about... Uh, 6 and 8 a.m., something in between there, depending on where you're at. But the central states, it should be uh, around 7 a.m., let's call it. Um, for a lot of the uh, day two outlook here, we see a, a big time increase here. We do have a general thunderstorm risk for a lot of the plains, the four corner states, some of the Midwest as well. Uh, we also have a marginal level one risk once again here for some of the plains. A yellow slight risk, which is going to be your level two risk for a lot of those southern plains. And we even have an enhanced risk for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, where we do expect quite a bit of widespread severe weather within there. So keep that in mind that it's quite substantial. Day three, we don't quite have an enhanced risk yet, but we do have that very large general thunderstorm risk area for a lot of the states. A large marginal risk here in the darker green and actually a very large slight risk as well. And I think that this leaves room for an upgrade to an enhanced risk perhaps in there if they feel it's warranted. So keep that in mind as well. This does have some room to expand, I think, on day two, which by the way, or better yet, this is day three. So this is for Friday morning all the way through Saturday morning. So mostly April 26th here, uh, this outlook is for. And I think that this could go enhanced even or more, who knows. Let's take a look at the extended range because we do have a couple of outlooks here. This one's for Saturday on the 27th all the way through again the morning of Sunday the 28th. We have this yellow area here extending through a lot of the upper Midwest and Southern Plains. This translates roughly to a slight risk of severe weather, so keep that in mind. Uh, the orange area here for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, it looks a lot like the day prior to it, honestly, uh, or the two days prior to it, yet better yet, where we had that enhanced risk over these areas. Uh, this also translates roughly to an enhanced risk. So definitely something to watch. This could even be more intense than those, those outlooks that I just mentioned because this is four days out. So this gives them a lot of time to want to upgrade this. Oftentimes we'll see just the yellow one and that can turn into even enhanced risk or moderate risk. When you have this orange 30% area like we see here over Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, that could go just enhanced, obviously, but even, even moderate or high because that's the highest outlook that they issue in the long range. So keep that in mind. We do also have a day five outlook here for Sunday on the 28th through Monday morning on the 29th. And that's mostly going to be for eastern Texas into a lot of the Midwest. So for states like Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin here, even states like Oklahoma and uh, Kansas still included, as well as, again, northeastern Texas. 
Again, this roughly translates to a slight risk for this entire area, but it is likely that this could go even higher than that, like let's say enhance for some of these areas or more. Keep that in mind that the day five range, they do leave a lot of room to upgrade this over time. They don't usually want to downgrade them. They want to slowly increase it through time or stay the same if they continue to feel the same way. Uh, that's usually the two options they go with. It's very rare to see them back down from an outlook that they issue. So definitely keep all of this in mind. Anyway, be sure to subscribe as we do upload almost every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.